Hello everyone. So um, I realized after uh, uploading a number of videos that uh, I had the radio on in the background for this video. So I wanted to make uh, make a separate audio uh, voiceover for this video and re-upload it so that I wasn't in you know danger of any kind of copyright infringement or anything like that. Um, so. I'm going to kind of just do a voiceover of what went on in this video and what I'm checking out right now is the uh, uh, the single pull uh, double throw switches that were uh, called for for this experiment. In fact, I think the ones that were included in my kit were uh, double pull uh, double throw, but uh, conceptually they were the um, same uh, in terms of functionality and that's what I was checking out when I was looking at this chart that the uh, the chart you know shows that hey there's really not much else uh, or not much different between them and uh, I guess I will just kind of pause between uh, important parts and add, uh, add the tips where they should be so in this case I was checking out the switches and the idea is is that you connect your circuit lines to the center posts of the switches where I was grabbing What I'm doing here is checking for, or I'm preparing to check for continuity. That way I can understand how the switching uh, mechanisms between both of them work. So in which position should both switches be so that continuity is there. And in this case, I don't believe continuity was present. And I still don't think continuity was present. So those first two or three tries, there was no continuity there, but I think in this one there will be. Right. So um, in the original audio track for this uh, that I put together, we heard beeps on that one. So what I am showing right here is that when that switch, with the, when the, um, the lever up top is slanted to the left, the middle post and the right post are connected. Now, of course, if I switch it the other way, then the middle post and the left post are connected. And that's how these work. So you can imagine if you have two, you know, two switches in a circuit, they both have to be connecting the uh, correct post so that the, you know, the actual series circuit could flow, right? So at this point, I'm setting up the circuit using the resistor and LED that the book called for. So all I'm doing here is I'm setting up two separate connections, you know, to, to both posts on both switches. So if both switches are in agreement, then you would have a current flowing through, you know, one of those uh, leads, like the red alligator clip lead, 
or if they're both switched the other way in agreement, then current would flow through the green uh, alligator clip lead. So here we're just trying to connect the positive portion of our um, power supply to the middle post, except it proves to be quite challenging with the alligator clips because of the uh, dimensions of the post. So I figured I would pull out a uh, screwdriver kit and see if I could loosen the Phillips head screw post and uh, stick the, the end of the wire underneath it instead and try to pinch it. Turns out this is really not easier than using an alligator clip, mainly because these new components that you get in the kits, the, uh, the threading on the screws is particularly stiff. And of course, you know, only having two hands, it's very challenging to hold the part stable, hold the wire under the screw head, and, and also secure it down all in the same shot. So I think I actually end up res resorting back to the alligator clips in a moment. I think one thing that would have been a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit easier to work with with these guys would have been some uh, basic cables or uh, wires just coming off of the posts. You know, maybe maybe instead of having posts on these, they could have been just solder, solder contact points with some wires leading off. That way you could just use your alligator clips and grab on and keep going. But can't help it. Didn't source the parts, just kind of bought the whole kit and that's what it came with. So. So all we're trying to do here is put the resistor in series with the, well, uh, the, that's right, the uh, wire ended up popping out of the alligator clips right there, but once we stick that back in, I think we'll get to go. It's a great reason to try to use breadboards or protoboards, whatever you want to call them, uh, as soon as you can in your electronic endeavors, uh, because using these... Uh, you know, just dangling wires and components that are floating in free space here is just a nightmare, as you can see. All right, so we're gonna to try to put the resistor back in series with our power source. And once we get those set up, I think the next thing this experiment called for. It's been a while. Just, I think I'm, I, I haven't done this experiment for about a week and a half or two. So I'm having to kind of recall my memories. I re-record the audio track for this. Um, so we're putting the LED into series with the resistor. So we're forming a very simple circuit but the goal is not to create a complex circuit. The goal is to just purely understand the uh, switches and their ability to open and close the connections at two different points along our series circuit.
So you can imagine trying to put one of the legs of the LED in with the alligator clip in with the resistor um, would be quite challenging since those clips are not terribly effective at holding a solid contact between numerous skinny components. But I think it's still beneficial to, to go through this pain because it, you know, it's still a lesson learned. So if all you've got is some alligator clips lying around the house and these basic components, don't let that stop you. Go for it. Just, you know, be prepared to, uh, you know, listen to some soothing music afterward to calm you down. <laughs> So it looks like we finally have it set up and, oh, not quite. We're going to stick the other end of the LED to the center post of our second uh, double pull, double throw switch. So if we were to kind of eyeball this circuit, uh, granted my arms are in the way, but if we were to kind of try to follow the perimeter of this uh, series, we would see that we are running from the single or the, the center pole of the, uh, the switch on the right through a resistor, through an LED, to the center pole of the second switch uh, to the left of top. So what we're going to do when we toggle these switches is we're going to, uh, assuming they're both in, a, in agreement, you know, in terms of both, both opening the connection to the same common line, we're either going to complete the series circuit by, you know, the, the power running through the red alligator clipped lead, or we're going to complete the circuit by the power running through the green all uh, alligator clipped lead. But if the switches are not in agreement, then essentially, you know, no electron flow will, will be present. Uh, again, my apologies for this uh, out of uh, you know out of norm audio track. Um, all the rest of my videos I, I recorded up through I think the end of experiment eleven. Uh, by the time I came back to this one and realized I had left the radio on in the background, um, the rest of them don't have this this problem. So audio will be directly in sync. So I think I'm still just kind of uh, walking through the, the different paths that the, the electrons could, could, uh, could take in this case. And my understanding of electronics is uh, quite a bit stronger now than it was just a week and a half ago or so when I did this. So um, that just goes to show though, it's a testament. Keep going through these uh, experiments if you have this book. You definitely learn a lot. So. So I flipped one switch and let's see, if that one's flipped to the left, that means the two, the center pole, the center pole and the interior pole are hot on the uh, top switch. And if I flip that one left, yeah, so there's still no, there's still no circuit until, yeah, there we go, because the light's on now. So what that is showing us is that the outer uh, the outer lead with the green alligator clips is the active lead that is completing the circuit
So really what you're looking for um, in terms of current, which it looks like that's what I was setting myself up to do here. I was going to measure the uh, current that's flowing through the series circuit. And what you usually aim for is up to around 20 milliamps of current uh, to reach your uh, LED. Um, too much more than that, you might burn it out, and much less than that. And you know, in the five to 20 milliamp, or in the five to like 10 milliamp range, it, it's just underpowered. It's not quite as bright. But once you start getting closer to 20, you're starting to reach that that optimal brightness without the risk of you know burning the LED out. So what I'm just doing right now is I'm hooking up the uh, the multimeter in series with the circuit um, so that I can correctly measure the current flow. Because if you look at the multimeter right now, it's set to direct current amp. And the red lead is on the left, which is where you put it if you want to measure current. So I think, just like before, I was having a little bit of difficulty here trying to uh, alligator clip the uh, leads, but I got it. So as you see right here, the multimeter is showing around, uh, looks like about six, six milliamps. So the LED is definitely not as bright as it could be, but that gives us an idea of, you know, how much current's flowing through. And of course, if we wanted to make the uh, LED brighter, we could drop the resistor that's part of this series circuit down to a you know a little bit less uh, lesser value of ohms so that more current could get through it and flow to our LED. So and just as an FYI I highly recommend this book. Um, it truly is a uh, great learning resource. I don't have any affiliation or anything like that with the uh, with the author or with the you know publishing house or anything. I'm just a hobbyist like like many of you, and uh, this was this is truly a, a one of a kind book. I, I have not in my uh, searches found many books like this.